I was anxious to come down here today to have uh, the chance, and this is my second visit uh, to this region over at uh, the airfield, of course, here at Fort Stewart, to catch up on the, on the progress and the great both challenges and efforts that uh, the Marin Division has been, has been making. And, you know, this is an Army at a time of great transition. We're coming out of our last, and hopefully for some time, final theater of war. Um, the budgetary changes and challenges that we're facing are significant. Uh, and we are an Army that uh, is needing to think about itself in, in different ways and needing to uh, plot ahead a future that, that is clouded and is uncertain. But there are certain things we are certain of, uh, and that is the men and women who put on this uniform and the amazing things they do, and I was certainly uh, very, very gratified to see some of those great soldiers doing their great work today. Um, whether it was out visiting with the uh, Gray Eagle Company, a company that uh, will deploy uh, to Afghanistan in June, or out on the ranges with our, our great helicopter uh, war fighters, watching them uh, hone their skills, uh, or just as we just uh, completed, sitting down with the sergeant majors and uh, the leadership of, of this great facility and, and talking about a variety of challenges we face, but most particularly sexual assault and sexual harassment. And uh, I was uplifted uh, from the moment uh, I stepped out of uh, the vehicles here this morning to uh, right through the lunch here today uh, to have uh, the opportunity to hear from and watch and observe uh, great soldiers doing what great soldiers have always done, and that is the important work of uh, keeping us free and keeping us strong. So it's always a great pleasure to be back with, uh, with General Murray. And I appreciate as well, I get a tip of the hat to Bill Cathart back there, who uh, my uh, CASA civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, who does a, a great job bringing the Army message uh, between the post and, and the community. So Bill, thanks for all that you do as well. So appreciate the opportunity to be with you uh, and be happy to try to respond to any questions you might have. Corey, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, my question, um, two years ago when you were here, we were talking about the possibility of downsizing. Um, uh, uh, and we now know, obviously, we will lose second brigade here. Um, initially, the timetable was somewhere between the announcement of 2017, we now know it's probably 20, 2015, I guess, next year. Correct. What, what went into that decision? Why, why so quick? Um, well, the, the Army, <clears throat> compared to the other services, is somewhat unique. Uh, if the Navy is challenged fiscally, uh, I'm not suggesting they do this, but by way of example, they can lay up an aircraft carrier and save billions of dollars. The Army is, as the Army has always been, made up of people. And when our budgets are cut so quickly and so significantly, as we've seen through sequestration and such, although we do have, thankfully, some relief from Congress in fiscal year 14 and 15, uh, but we had sequestration in 13, and the law of the land says we'll go back into it uh, under the current way forward in 2016. There are, uh, the only place where we can really find that money uh, is, is through our end strength. The other thing as we began to downsize, um, we found that given the, the decrease in operations and personnel tempo, that, that we could actually effectively, without, without uh, in, uh, too much risk, bring down that end strength. And so we moved the target from 2017 to 2015. That'll allow us to uh, meet our budget challenges and allow us to, uh, I think, make the best decisions in terms of which personnel we keep um, and, and posture us more effectively to continue to work through whatever the budget uh, profile may look like as Congress goes forward. So we go to Denise next. Yes. Um, I was reading that there may be some downsizing of civilian um, employees also, 20 to 25%. But we were directed by the Department of Defense, Secretary Hagel, to find 20% savings in, in headquarters. Uh, we, we felt 
because of how we had grown, particularly in our civilian and strength in the Army, we might be able at the headquarters level uh, to, do, uh, to do a bit more. So we've targeted 25%. Uh, I, I can't tell you I would defer to, to General Murray and others here, but, but I think here locally, uh, if you see any effects, uh, they'll be relatively minimal. Uh, the civilian workforce is often overlooked and, and uh, underappreciated. And, and I'll tell you, they too have been through the last 12 years of struggle. They have done amazing things quietly, professionally, uh, and lately their reward has been furloughs and, and pay freezes and, and three years of no, no cost of living adjustments. Uh, not a lot of appreciation for a workforce that is absolutely critical to everything we do. So we're trying to be very mindful of any decisions we make and the impact it will have upon them. Uh, they're, they're an irreplaceable important part of this team and, and we appreciate all the sacrifices that they've made too.